the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father be with you, and also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we've been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. His bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left his earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. Let us hear the story of his parting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing upwards towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who's been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Seeing we have a great high priest who's passed through the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us offer him praise worthy of his name. Let us pray our risen and ascended Lord will lead us to eternal life. Risen Christ, you've raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Lord Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father has promised. So, so stay here in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple praising God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I remember one trip where I was on holiday and went to a cathedral in another city. And the person preaching on Ascension Day, we were there on Ascension Day, um, started off by saying, I drew the short straw, I've got to preach on Ascension Day, and I don't know what to say. Some people find the concept of Ascension Day difficult, because we're in an era of space travel. And we're used to the fact that people can actually, millions and millions of our world's population has flown in an aeroplane. And a significant number have actually been up into orbit and into space, and some have even walked on the moon. 
we've got people who've who understand what happens when you go up a little way and then you go a bit further and then you go a bit further we, we're used to the concept we understand it and so for us to go up a few feet isn't to be in heaven is to be up a few feet in the air and to continue up to the different layers of the atmosphere so perhaps our minds find it harder to grapple with this idea of what exactly happened at the ascension i did a certain amount of science in my youth and uh, i'm used to thinking scientifically and having scientific backgrounds for things and proofs and theorems and they're tested and and if they fit then that is the, a theory that's accepted but we don't know the science of the ascension what we do know is what was reported by the disciples who were there but to be honest if you had put somebody who'd walked in with the sandwiches to report what happened in the laboratory when nuclear fission was going on what they would have reported would have been nothing like the scientific process that was happening because what we observe is only a part of reality it isn't an explanation or a complete understanding it seems pretty certain the disciples were looking upwards and gazing up into heaven is the actual phrase used so they, they seem to have been definitely assuming Jesus had disappeared upwards. Although one of the accounts just says that he, he was no longer with them. He withdrew from them, it says in our gospel reading today. He just withdrew. Withdrew sounds like he walked away off into the distance. Whether sideways or upwards. He wasn't physically there anymore and they didn't see him anymore. But they didn't have a dead body to deal with at any point. I think if we actually knew exactly scientifically what happened at the ascension, it wouldn't help us one bit because it wouldn't be the real meaning. You know, if, if someone puts on the kettle to make you a cup of tea when you're feeling really down, the fact they've made you the cup of tea has a meaning that is unrelated to whether you understand exactly what heat does to the molecules in water so they make steam and so the hot water then brings out the flavor in the tea in the way cold water wouldn't work on a tea bag you could know all the science of that and not understand the care and compassion of the person making tea for the other one and so with the ascension even if we knew the exact detail of what happened scientifically it wouldn't tell us the meaning and the meaning is so amazing and beyond anything that can make science so important to work out the how god did it what ex how exactly he did it in detail we don't know but what did he do well we know at christmas we believe at christmas in the words of the christmas carol he came down to earth from heaven, who was Lord and God of all. Jesus, who was God, chose to come to earth and take on our humanity. At Christmas, he brought the Godhead into our humanity. And while he was alive, he was both man and God. He said, clearly, the Father and I are one. And yet he called himself the son of man and there are many many bible passages that refer to that but then at the ascension he took our humanity to god that's what happened whatever the science shows about the detail wouldn't explain it any more than it explains the wonderful benefit of that cup of tea for the person who's upset made by the person who's making it for them by looking at the science of the water boiling we don't need to understand the science better we can read what the disciples observed and take it that's what they saw we don't need more explanation 
We just need to know and trust that Jesus takes our humanity into a new realm, that he gives us the possibility of a closeness with God that we never had before. And you'll remember his promise always that he's gone to prepare a place for us. And he'll come back and receive us there. To him be praise and glory. Amen. We join in our short words of belief. Do you believe in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us join in our prayers for the church and the world. Lord, at this time, we bring before you your church as it's the beginning of the time of thy kingdom come from now until Pentecost. And churches throughout the world are keeping this time as a special time to think of those they know and wish a blessing on them and that they will draw closer to Christ. We ask for your blessing on everyone taking part in thy kingdom come, all the churches, all the different organizations, and we must ask that many more people will know your comfort and your love. We pray for our church here in England, for all the difficulties due to coronavirus. We pray for Bishop Stephen being confirmed as Archbishop of York in July. We pray for Bishop Peter, acting Bishop of Chelmsford, as well as many other duties. Ask that you bless and strengthen him and grant great wisdom to him and all those who work with him to divide the work so that no one is too stressed. And we thank you for the great blessing he brings to all of us. Pray for all the clergy in the Church of England, especially those in our deanery, in Newham, and those in our NMU. Help us all, Lord, to be your servants, to do the job you've called us to do in the way you're calling it to do, us to do it in these strange circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for everyone in these days of COVID, all those who've lost loved ones, all those who've been very ill and are slow to recover, all those who've lost jobs, those who've had businesses ruined, many who are short of food or short of other essentials, or whose lives have in other ways been disrupted. We ask, Lord, that you will be with everyone and lead those who do care to See the best way to help all of them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the departed. At St Martin's, we remember particularly Josephine, our church warden. We also remember Joanna, who died earlier this year. We remember all those known to us personally. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray for all those who mourn them, that you will give them a blessing to make the best memorial possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all those working in the health service or other caring areas, working to give us supplies, working to bring us food, 
working to do deliveries the many people we depend on for our existence. We ask that you strengthen them and help them to know that they're appreciated. We ask that you guide all our politicians and other leaders to help our nation do the wisest thing in these circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, who ascended above the heavens, help us who receive your gifts to work in your service in the way you would have us go. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I'm going to the Father. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Born of a woman, he came to the rescue of our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal. And by his ascension, he gave us the sure hope that where he is, we may also be. Therefore, the universe resounds with Easter joy and with choirs of angels. We say forever, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Martin of Tours and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Please pray the Lord's Prayer in your own language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, we died, you died. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live with you. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that we, nourished with such spiritual blessings, may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. They were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. May the Spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost bring the word alive with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.